Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Shadow or Door Shadow coming back to you with episode 58 of Direwolf 20's 1.19 mod pack. And today, I am in the ocean, uh, actually figuring out crude oil. So, if you don't know, I created these uh, laser drills and stuff a while ago to try and get lava, but they didn't work out. But apparently, crude oil does work. So, I've got a whole lot of laser drills pointing into the center with uh, efficiency, processing, and speed. And I have a tank in here that is actually then coming out here through an entangled block, pumping into several different tanks, uh, four of these actual jumbo tanks, and these are piping into the ender tank. So we've got five in total buffers for fluid, and this is fantastic, right? So we've got crude oil. That was the first thing I wanted to deal with this episode because we do need to get... Um, and cinematic craft, right? We're, we're going to get further in cinematic craft, and crude oil is one of those things that you need to get before really starting. I would suggest, unless you're doing it solo, then you need to get into it. Um, and by solo, I mean like actually using the mod independently, which you know you can do. Um, and they have their own pump system and everything in pneumatic craft. I'm just not using it. So let's toss all this stuff in here. I think I just threw my repair ring back in there. It's not like I really need it. I haven't really had it on me for a while, so let's see. Let's toss some of this other stuff out real quick. All right, tangled binder. Let's quickly toss the ring out. Okay, so I've got this tank full of crude oil. Now, what do we do? Oop, didn't mean to place it. So, according to the manual, the crude oil, of course, this tells you where to get it. Um... And it'll talk to you about plastic and lubricants uh, using liquid or f liquid compressors. Crude oil has two purposes to be refined into high quality fuels and can be used in liquid compressors and for making plastic and lubricants. So you will need quite a bit of this, right? Um, definitely setting up integrated uh, or not integrated industrial foregoing setting up a few of those, I think, is suggested. OK, so. Ooh. I think this blew up while well, I was gone. I kind of forgot to do anything about that, but that's okay. So let's grab another air compressor. And all of the air is gone out of this, by the way. So we could actually grab a couple air compressors here. And what do you need an air compressor for? So adding air into the pressure chamber actually would allow for you to get multiple... Uh, let's actually just move these back one here get multiple um, different pieces of the compressed iron or the compressed iron blocks, right? So do we really need this right now? No, not really. We got a decent chunk of compressed iron, but we will need more most likely. So let's see. Pneumatic craft. There we go. I was looking for pressure tubes. We're just going to actually grab coal this time. One, two, three, four. All right, so the reason I want to grab four of these, of course, is because I want to be able to actually show you guys how we're doing this. So if I grab a hopper here and I put this in here, put this right here, and I right click, there's actually a, there should be a filter. I think it's on this thing then. Uh, apparently there is no filter anymore. I think that might be an upgrade then. Filter. Doodly doo. I'm not seeing anything. I thought there was a filter of some sort with this. I see volume and security, but I don't see filter. So if we look at this and look at upgrades. Dispenser, speed. Huh, just yeets them into the void. That's pretty interesting. Or not into the void, but into the world. So let's actually grab a chest right here. So crafted. Okay, so there's actually kind of that filter, I guess. So let's see here. If we grab compressed iron, or just iron ingots... Let's actually just go for 32 of these real quick. Just so I can show you how this is working. So on the other side here, 
you can see, maybe, it's going to put all the items in first, because it has to open that first door, and then when all the items are in there, it'll open the second, just like this, put the items in, close the door, and over time, it'll actually start compressing these once it hits enough pressure, which I believe... Let's see. It's two bars. So we're almost there. Okay. So that's pretty cool, right? What other upgrades can we get? Security, speed, volume. How do you, what is a volume upgrade? Is this thing right here, which requires air canisters? Let's see, can I grab a couple of these? And actually holding shift actually shows you. So in the upgrade for this, uh, by two square U, where U the number of volume upgrades. Note, adding volume upgrades increases the air that can be stored, causing a pressure drop. Remove upgrades keeps the pressure constant. Losing air, or yeah. Keeps the pressure constant, losing air from the machine. And this thing could take volume upgrades too, right? Is that what I read? Yeah, and you can hold up to 25. So if I just grab 25 air canisters, you just grab 25 of these. Oop, out of iron. And I think the best way, honestly, because I have so much iron that I'm not like worried about like wasting some of this honestly is just grab the ad astra where's my ad astra book here there we go and then we grab the explosion which is currently what i'm on we just drop all this iron oh my magnet drop all the iron blow it all up yeah, like, I don't really mind if we're losing a few pieces of iron. Like, I have a lot of chunks, too. And you guys haven't even seen that. I did shut off the mining lamps quite a while ago. All right, and we just toss those in there. So we have a lot more pressure that can be added, right? All right, so what else can we do? Because I know there's a lot to do uh, with this mod. So we've got the crude oil, which we can make plastics, lubricants, and a few other things with. Um, let's see, pressure. So this is math. That you guys can try and read. I know it's important, but we're not to that point yet, really, because I, I don't need that stuff until I can actually toggle this. So a vortex tube is a dynamic heat source which converts pressure directly into heat and cold it's highly recommended to put a heat sink on the used the unused side of the vortex tube for efficiency a heat frame is a great gadget that can be used to heat or freeze items in any inventory note that heat frames will not absorb heat directly from static heat source but you could put a heat pipe beside it to transmit heat heat sink a block that can be used efficiently disperse heat or cold from the block that it's attached to into the atmosphere heat pipe furnace furnace continued so yeah you could use furnaces for that as well. So heat, heat disperses from hotter objects to colder objects. Blocks will be only spread heat to adjacent blocks to support concepts of heat, heat sources. Different thermal resistant torches in air have high resistance while compressed iron blocks have a very low resistance. Thermal resistance determines how fast heat can spread from one object to another. Different objects have different thermal capacity. The higher the capacity, the slower the temperature will rise. 
given heat gain similarity. Okay, so there's insulation. To avoid heat loss, ensure that there's no faces or exposed to air blocks. Any non-conducting block will do. It'll, it doesn't have to be a full block either. Trap doors and slabs. We're going to actually just like take this stuff out for right now. Because I'm scared it's going to blow up. Uh, heat loss. So just surround the blocks. Some machines in Metacraft produce heat that may be used to dissipate. Needs to be dissipated and some require heat to run. Therefore, you'll need to find ways to manipulate the temperatures of these machines. So using like vortexes and stuff. Okay. So you can make compressed stone inside of this as well. Okay. Upgrade. So here he is. The volume upgrade. Dispenser upgrade. Crafting an inventory. So that's an inventory. Life. The actual item life upgrade. Can I throw that in there? I thought I could, but maybe this needs to be bigger. But this upgrade actually will prevent things from despawning while in use, I believe. I know there's something that used to do that. Maybe it's not here anymore, but I think that's what that is. Collector drone, drone, harvesting drone, logistical drones, minigun. Maybe that's not what I'm thinking. Maybe it's not here anymore. That's fine. Block tracker, speed upgrade. You can also use a liquid hopper or other modded tank of lubricant to craft multiple upgrades at a time. Crafting speed upgrades from glycol. Glycerol, I think, actually, but, you know, who knows. So there's a ton and ton of these different upgrades. Jet boots. Flippers, scuba. So this is all for like the armor, I'm pretty sure. Ender visor, stomp. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Tons and tons of upgrades, right? Um, different things about the GUI. Okay, let's move on. So the compressors, we have the manual compressor. What is this? Manual compressor is an early game compressor which produces compressed air for manual labor and hunger. Okay, so holding right-click basically allows you to pump it. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't know that was a thing. The thermal compressor is a simple compressor which uses the temperature differential of opposites, horizontal sides, to produce compressed air. The greater the temperature gradient, the more air that is produced. Note, trying to run this compressor purely from a vortex tube won't work. You will get a net pressure loss. The thermal compressor using lava and packed ice to provide a temperature gradient. Okay. So it can be disabled by redstone. Huh. And you actually do need a normal air compressor to do that. The north-south faces are thermally connected to one another, as are the east-west faces, but there is no cross-connection from north-south, east-west, Thermally connected sides will attempt to equalize the temperature, so effort is needed to maintain a good temperature differential. Okay, so you could basically put, you know, ice and lava on one side, ice and lava on the other, and that would actually be generating more. That's pretty cool. So tubes and modules. So a flow detector module. This actually would allow for you to detect how much is in the pipes. Okay. So what did I just say this was? Flow detector. All right, so if I look at this, what is this? So gold and redstone. All right, so let's throw some coal back in here. All right. And then in here, let's do two and let's do four. 
Actually, no, I need eight and, and four, right? I do love the little animations that this mod has. It's so cool. Can I not put more than... There we go. Four of those bad boys. And then we can make a flow detector. So if I were to put this, let's actually just do this. So you could see emitting a redstone of two. Huh. So I think once this would fill up, would be kind of your time to start panicking a little bit more. And apparently it actually prevents detect er, connection. So let's actually do... Yeah, see, it, it does break. Huh. It's a bit of a strange mechanic. I don't know 100% know why that's like that, but... Oop, nope, that's the wrong book. So we got charging modules. So we got a few different things, right? Like, there is quite a few different things we could look. Regulator module. Yeah, so this one actually regulates pressure through the tunnel. Uh, safety tube module. The safety tube module, when you apply a module expansion, okay, so I don't need to know that. This tube module is used to limit the pressure in a tube to a certain value, preventing explosions. Any excess pressure will be dispersed into an atmosphere, which means energy loss. Therefore, the module is the best used in conservation with the pressure gauge module. Okay, so pressure gauge module and safety module. I think that's more what I was thinking. So pressure gauge module and safety module. Rather than this flow one. Okay, so safety. This thing. All right, so let's knock this one out. Knock that pipe out. Let's just get rid of that, too. All right, and then this, and then this. No? Is that not how that works? Okay, so pressure gauge tube module. Let me actually break this one more time here. All right. So. Pressure gauge on is currently in the tube is attached to it also emits a directional redstone signal of which the strength is equal to two times the pressure. A pressure of 3.5 results in a redstone signal of 7. Okay, so if we actually... Oh, do I want to do this? Eh, uh, fine. Let's make this complicated. Why not? I haven't used integrated dynamics this whole time. It's time to make things extra complicated. Um... But let's see. I, I don't even know if this would work. Let's actually make sure before I just, like, jump into this. So sneak. No, I want to look at the safety module, but it's not letting me. All right, so let's just look up safety. Uh, when the module expansion card. Hold on. 
What are these? So these require PCBs, and that is a whole host of stuff that we have not gotten into. Yikes. I mean, I guess that's kind of what we're looking at. Soon. Because you need an empty PCB. Which I don't remember how to get a, a PCB at all. So you need, there's an etching tank. Fill this with etching acid and insert empty PCBs which have been exposed to a UV light box can optionally be heated above 50 degrees Celsius for progressively faster etching, but etching acid will slowly be used when heated thus. Okay. All right, so that's not, a, that's not an option right now, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna click this here. Of course, we do need logic cables. If you don't have logic cables, you can't actually interact with it, right? So here, okay, so this is not a non-comparator signal. So this is just straight redstone signal. So right now we should be at two, right? Okay. So we need to think if we want this bar to be at four, we'd want this to be at eight, okay? So let's actually go grab the logic bench, which is up here. All right. Okay, so variable card. And could you do this with normal redstone? Absolutely. It's not difficult, but I want to do it this way because I think it'd just be interesting. You know, let's let's take Gander at what integrated dynamics is. And I know I've done this a little bit before, but, you know, might as well just take it for another little trip. Since we're almost done with this series, I think it's time to kind of just mess around with this. So then we also need a redstone card from here. And we're going to say equals equals. I had to find my equals key on my keyboard for a second there. And we're going to put this here, put this here, grab this. So which means that our redstone signal must be equal to 8 to actually output anything. Okay? So now we need the redstone writer. Uh, which is this one. I thought I crafted a redstone writer, but apparently I didn't. And then we're going to put that here, I guess, and connect these two. And then here we're going to say redstone signal there, and of course we'll need a variable store. Put that there, put that there. And that should, in theory, work. Yeah, because you're not receiving redstone because you shouldn't be yet. So this is just kind of like simple early game, well, early pneumatic craft game uh, automation or lack thereof, I guess, because it is just kind of like, hey, do you meet these requirements? If so, stop. If you do not, then keep going. You know... Let's see here. So we also can't read this thing anymore, but that's fine. You can read it through one probe, which is, you know, awesome. All right, so let's keep looking. We've kind of a little bit of, you know, just side automation right there. So here's a whole bunch of different modules. There's a redstone module. Huh. Basically use the tubes as redstone conduits. That might have been nice to know a while ago. <laughs> I really do think that actually could be useful. If you're, like, not using laser I.O. and you want to run redstone vertically, uh, that would actually be a perfectly acceptable way to do it. I mean, it, it's not that expensive, and you only need two. That's pretty cool. Logistics. So you could actually move items as well. Man, a pneumatic craft, this repressurized version has just been updated a lot. And I like it. I like seeing this stuff. So vacuum tube module. As a vacuum pump provides negative pressure, but it but in a slightly more compact way it can be placed on a vertical tube, unlike the full size pump, which can be only be oriented horizontally. The advantages of compactness, the disadvantage is more limited upgradeability in terms of speed and volume. 
Okay, so what's the vacuum pump? Oh, this is actually what they use to get the oil out in one of the tutorials. Okay, so that's just like your normal everyday pump. It's just a little bit more confusing. Huh. That's actually pretty cool. If you had multiple different tiers of pipes and stuff, that's nifty. How are we doing over here? So we're still climbing. Yeah, and this stuff is only supposed to go up to 4.9. I think it used to be like 5.1, but I think it now says that 4.9 is your like safety threshold. So, okay. All right, so manufacturing etching acid. So this is rotten flesh, gunpowder, spider eye in a bucket. So rotten flesh, gunpowder, spider eye, And a bucket. All right. So if we take this and we toss this all in here, it'll all slowly get tossed into the center here. Maybe. Yeah, we don't have the lubricant. I guess lubricant's something that comes up in our future, right? That's fine. Still cruising over here. I just, I think it is interesting. Like, Pneumatic Craft's whole, like, kind of own energy system in a way. Using, like, air, you know. I, I think it's interesting. It really is. All right, so we've got the etching acid. There's a refinery, which will give us either... Let's see, what is this actually looking for? So I guess you can build different sizes of the refineries. So it says the refinery is a multi-block structure placed down a refinery controller, then stack two to four refinery outputs on top or besides the controller... Um, and then apparently the more you have, the different types of liquids you're going to get. So if you're looking for LPG or diesel, you know, just doing the first one would make sense. The third is LPG, kerosene, and diesel. And the fourth is LPG, gasoline, kerosene, and diesel. Huh. So it goes the highest, the lightest fuel will always be on the top. The heaviest on the bottom, if you add more refinery outputs to an existing stack, the multi-block will do its best to automatically rearrange an existing output. Hmm. All produced liquids can be used as in a fluid liquid compressor, huh? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at that. I would assume that, which one is it? Gasoline is probably the better one. Their setup tip, since the refinery is a multi-block with many faces exposed to an air, if you can lose heat quite rapidly, if not well insulated, therefore it's strongly recommended to cover all unused faces of the multi-block to maximum efficiency. Note that any non-heated conducting blocks can be used, including a semi-solid block like slabs, trap doors, but thermal lagging is especially recommended. Huh. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Thermal lagging. Hmm? Uh, is, is that not that expensive either? Let's actually just grab a couple of these. So it's actually just wool. No problem. Give me some wool. Alright, we'll just grab a handful of those. Keep them on our person. Okay, so you actually are outputting power. but you are not emptying. Did I do that wrong?
Do I need to, like, put this here, maybe? Can't have a block above it? I, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Know that, by the way. Like, that's genuinely how I am right now. I don't know what I'm doing that much. I would assume, like... Okay, so yeah. Emitting a redstone signal of 8. You aren't receiving anything. Okay, now you're receiving a redstone signal. But you're still not outputting. Why is that? Let me look up the safety tube module real quick. All right, so we're almost to 4.9. I think I know what this is now. Um, from the last time, I think I've seen this uh, has been changed. This is the thing that I was thinking of, but it is wrong. Yeah, see, now it's not even releasing pressure. Yeah, see. So it's releasing it. It's going to keep it from exploding. Um, but the thing is, I don't think you need redstone signal. Like, legitimately. Yeah. So, what the book is suggesting, and I read it more in depth, is you actually turn on your uh, compressors using this, or turn them off, rather. So, if you wanted to do that, I mean, you could, right? What I would think I would do is something like this, and then grab the variable card, which I did change this to a greater than or equal to, because, you know, that's probably making sense a little bit there. Uh, and then uh, cobblestone. Actually, I have a piece of cobblestone right here. And then a redstone torch. So here, here, require high signal, require high signal. Actually, I don't think that's working. So hold on. So I think you probably need to make this a bit more complicated, right? Probably need to come down here to an actual piece of redstone. And we could actually change this out to a redstone pen, just so it doesn't do whatever in the world that's doing. Would that actually emit? I'm curious. Okay, no, so it actually needs to go up. Which is kind of strange, but that works. So, if I did this, for example... And I put this needs to... So this is actually still on high signal. Okay. So this would actually function. If I get rid of this, it actually shouldn't avoid any air, right? Okay. So what I'm thinking is we do need to do like a repeater. Goodness. It keeps scaring me every time it does that because I'm not used to that noise. Let's actually just muffle that noise. So pressure... Um, air leak. Is it called leak? Yeah, leaking gas. There we go. And then we can do this, this. And then here, probably just run this off this. And we can say on high on all of these. Actually, this block is high, isn't it? Dang it. So let me actually go out one block. I forgot. Block connectivity and all that stuff, right? So we could do something like this. Okay. And of course, we need to make sure that's running up the block. And then everything should shut off once it has enough uh, pressure in the system. Right? 
And then we'll just turn you on to high. Okay, you're already on high, so we'll do that. Everything else has cold. But yeah, that should work as like a burst type of system. This is a little unnecessary, but also I don't feel like running an absolute ton of redstone to get to the signal that we want. Because once this hits, you know, eight or above, we're sending a signal saying, hey, turn your machines off, basically. Uh, which is, you know, fantastic. But these should not actually have a signal. So, yeah. With that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Um, also, I posted something on the community tab as of yesterday. Hopefully, the mod pack will get approved and you guys can see the shenanigans that I was up to. It's not like a super complicated pack. I didn't do a whole bunch of customization or changing of crafting recipes or anything. Um, but the pack will be released in alpha, basically saying, hey, you guys are going to help me. Um, I'm going to report issues. You guys can report issues. And we can all have fun all at once. But with that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Stay awesome, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye!